it's good to be together today, and thanks for joining us. Uh, it's always good. Saturdays and Sundays are great days. Uh, our uh, soul winning meetings filled up with people and folks out um, witnessing, knocking on doors, passing out tracts, visiting Sunday school children, visiting the bus riders, and then, um, of course, our jail and rest home ministries. And the, the things that go on on this property, if you took all that and set it aside, what all the other stuff that goes on is so awesome. It's so worth being a part of it. And um, the, if we just drew a circle around this chunk of land and moved it, our rest homes, our jails, the buses that go out, and people visiting the bus riders and talking to family members, and then um, the buses going out, picking up people, and the singing and the fun and the, the food, um, and um, then people in the streets, and just so many areas of ministry that are out in the community. And that is so, that's so New Testament. And we want to be very careful to not allow us to ever have a ministry that is that is just on this little thing. Um, Wednesday afternoons, 3.30, I have a Bible study, this same Bible study that's in the evening at 7. And um, we started during COVID. Um, I'm not sure why, how it all got started, but people that didn't go out, get out after dark or didn't want to be in a crowd. I can't remember all the details, but anyway, it just kind of kept up. And um, and we have that group of people. And and I just think I love all the things that go on. And the gospel ministry is supposed to be a powerful thing, making an impact on the world. But with all that um, in mind, I wanted to mention the importance of your hymnal. Um, I don't know if, I mean, right here, my hymnal's on the shelf right next to me, behind me, on my desk in my office at home. I just have a little, one of the bedrooms, I have most of my books in a desk, and right over to the left, there's a hymnal right there. Um, in the back room, um, behind the camera, there's a little cubby hole with uh, dozens, I don't know, hundreds of pictures of um, missionaries that I pray for, And but on one of the bookshelves back there, I've got I don't know, five or six hymnals or more probably, but but hymnals are so important. Next to the book, the Word of God, and your checkbook, for those of you old enough to know what a checkbook is, um, this is the most important book. Don't let your church get rid of their hymn books, and don't cause a fuss. Just tell people, I'm not going to a church that gets rid of the hymnals, and, and uh, I wouldn't do it. I would leave. I'd go to another church because to get rid of the hymn book is a direction. And I believe in the hymnal. This is the thing that God has used. Now, I know most of these, I don't know, I shouldn't say most, but I would guess most of the familiar hymns, I know them by heart. I sing in church. I think singing is a good thing. It's good for the soul. It's good for, it's good that I sing. For those who hear me sing, it's good that they sing, so I hear them sing. It's good that we sing corporately as a corporate body, so we learn harmony, to harmonize together. Uh, the the music itself is powerful, and I love uh, I love the hymns because a lot of the newer music there's no melody, no harmony, and it's kind of like this this benign intro, and it's just this background music. But you you play a traditional introduction to the old rugged cross, and before it ever gets to that first word on a hill far away. Already in our hearts, we've been touched because we know where it's going. It's going to Calvary. And, um, and uh, Jesus is coming again. And you hear the intro to marvelous message we bring, glorious care we sing, wonderful words of the King. Jesus is coming again. Before it ever gets that opening, that opening <clears throat> word, we know where it's going. And it's going to the second coming. And this hymnal is so powerful. And that's why uh, we have an orchestra. But uh, that orchestra stays traditional and uh, we don't have a band we have uh, strings and woodwinds and brass um, we have a keyboard we had an organ but um, it got messed up and found a keyboard is easier to replace and easier to handle than the old traditional organs but it's, we still I want it to sound like an organ and then we have a, a good piano um, but these these hymns and and there's so many important songs in here and the and the hymns words that'll encourage you um, who can cheer the heart like Jesus 
by his presence, all divine. Here we are, um, published 1931, uh, Nazarene Publishing House. Um, True and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me and the fairest of 10,000. In my blessed Lord I see Love of Christ so freely given, grace of God beyond degree, mercy higher than the heavens, deeper than the deepest sea. What a wonderful redemption. Never can a mortal know how my sins, though red like crimson, can be whiter than the snow. Every need he has hand supplying, every good in him I see. On his strength divine relying, he is all and all to me. By the crystal flowing river, with the ransomed, I will sing and forever and forever praise and glorify the King. Now, look, when you get down, open your hymnal and read these. You don't have to sing them. Just read the lyrics. They're pow- That's why lyrics should be poetic. Ly- lyrics should have a cadence that goes with the music, whether you're playing the music or not. And, and lyrics should have a, a rhyme and a rhythm. And um, the cadence or the tempo of the, of the hymns, don't lose your hymnal. Don't lose your hymnal. If your church has gotten rid of the hymnal, then start a campaign to get them back and, uh, and get, a, get a book of old-fashioned hymns. Our church started, and again, we're looking at 41 years ago, but as I remember, um, and there, again, I'm, I don't have the best memory, but some of the details may be off here, but as I remember being out soul winning, meeting people, uh, everybody who was nice to me, I went to their house every week till the church started, and then every week after it started until I knew they weren't coming to church. But um, so I'd meet somebody knocking on doors, chit chat, and leave. And I thought they're nice. I'll put their name down. I go back. So if I met them on the first week, I started knocking on doors six weeks before we started. So if I met them the first week, I talked to them six times, or I was at least at their door six times before the opening day. And uh, one of the houses I was at. I forget how it all came about. They want to know about hymnals. And I said, and it never crossed my mind. I never thought, oh yeah, we need hymnals. And um, they had a box of hymnals. And I want to say it was some Presbyterian church, Faith Presbyterian or whatever. And I said, oh, I'll take them. And um, so I got this box of hymnals. And our opening Sunday morning, we had hymnals. And I don't know what we'd have done without them. God just knew I was an idiot. And God covered for me. And aren't you glad God covers for us when we're not the brightest bulbs on the tree? But in a dark world, any light shines. And I know I'm not much, but I've got a great God who's much. And um, But from the very first day, uh, just recently, a good young man went to many of our camps, uh, went to Bible college, served in his home church for a while, started a church in Anaheim. And I called him up a few weeks into the church. And I said, hey, what are you doing for hymnals? He said, we just haven't had any hymnals. And, and they were putting the lyrics uh, on a screen. And I am, I don't think screens are sinful, but they're, if they're a replacement for a hymnal, they're sinful in my mind. And, um, but they didn't have any hymnals. I said, would you, would you use them if we bought them for you? He said, oh yeah, we love hymnals. I said, all right, you pick out which hymnal you want because everybody's different. And I think he picked out a hymnal for Majesty Music, if I remember, remember right. But I said, you pick out a hymnal, we'll buy them. And I went to our church and said, how many of you will buy a hymnal for this new church? And we bought however many hymnals, I think a, a, a hundred or something. But but all oh, hymns are so very, very important. Now, um, we are, in this uh, this fall, we have a, a, a fundamentalist conference. Uh, I'm still fundamental. We're still a church and still a fundamental church. And we're still a Baptist church. And we're still, uh, we're, we're going to stay a church. We're not a fellowship, a twig, a vine, a branch. We're a church. A church is a called out assembly of God's saved, baptized believers. That's what a church is. And you can get a bunch of people together at a bar and call it a fellowship. <coughs> you can get a, a family reunion going on with every kind of ideology imaginable and call it a gathering of friends. But we're, no, we're a church. We are a called out assembly of saved, baptized, separated Baptist believers. And I love it. Now, this morning, um, I'm going to take just a, a minute or two and throw out a couple of quick thoughts on on what is it that sets so many churches on their you know kind of turns people sideways and they and they struggle with uh, the ideas of uh, an old fashioned fundamental church. I started to mention our conference. I've got Pastor Terry Angel and Pastor Jerry Ross, Pastor Mike Johnson. Those three men coming in. Brother Johnson's going to open on Sunday and Wednesday because he's 
um, of, I don't know what he's called. He's, he's turned the pulpit over to one of his assistants, but he's still there a lot. But he travels all the time. So he's free Sunday and Wednesday. And then Jerry Ross, Terry Angel in the middle. And then daytime, we're going to have some preaching each morning as well, a couple of sermons. And um, it'll just be a great time together. But the theme is fundamentals. We are fundamentalists. I know one of the most well-known preachers in um, in Southern California, he said, don't use the word fundamental. That's not a popular word. Well, you know what? I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to be right. And I'm not here to somehow suck you in through some fraudulent thing. I am what I am, like Popeye said, and that's all that I am. And um, fundamental means I go back to those roots and I go back to the foundation. There's some things I stand for. What, what are my roots? And, and my roots are not in a, in a hippie movement in the 60s. My roots are in a J. Frank Norris and a John Rice and a Lee Robertson, a Lester Roloff. And my roots go back to old-fashioned Baptists like Charles Spurgeon. My roots go back to the Baptists throughout the dark ages. I'm an old-fashioned, Bible-believing, fundamental, hymn-singing, King James Bible-toting Baptist and very happy. Well, that conference we're going to have, you're going to enjoy it or you won't. Might not be good to come if you don't want to hear a bunch of preaching on being a fundamentalist. But one of the things that kind of irritates people, if you... Uh, if you uh, look in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, "What uh, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So there's a yoking. We're tied together in a business. We're tied together in, in, some, in marriage. We're tied together in some venture that we're working on together. He says, don't be yoked up with unbelievers. Uh, that's not what you're supposed to do. Why? Because what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What co concord hath Christ with Belial? What a part that he that believeth with an infidel? And, um, and he goes down to verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be a separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. There are things we should not touch. There are ideas we should not uh, get involved in. There are fellowships we should separate ourselves from. And uh, excuse me because I'm a little raspy today. And um, I apologize for not having Dr. Pepper, but um, I should have a better drink than water. I always tease that water is for dogs. Uh, human beings need diet soda. But um, the, uh, this matter of separation, I'm not embarrassed about it. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful for the young people that have come out of our church and, and everybody that's gone through our ministry and, and been here for years and gone wherever. We have people scattered all over the country like any church. They don't, don't all believe just like I believe, but they all know what I believe, and they all know I really believe it, and they know I've never changed on it, and they know where I'll be when they come back to visit, and, and, it's, and, and I hope they know I love them just like they are. They don't have to agree with me. I'm not deity. Uh, I'm just trying to honor the Word of God, and I've got plenty of weaknesses, so it's not any big, uh, um, not any big thing that somebody's got to agree with me. But this is where I've stood for these 41 years and where I'm going to continue to stand by his grace. But he says, touch not the unclean things. There are things we shouldn't be involved in. He said, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? There are places and people we should not have fellowship with. There are organizations that we should not be affiliated with. And so when we talk about separation, I've got five areas. I have no idea where these came from because I can tell they all start with, with an A. And, and I don't think that way. I like it when people do it, but, you know, they'll have their sermon and, and the first word is an A and the third word is a S and, and all the words are A and S and A. And I, I can't do that. I'd be sitting all day in a dictionary trying to find the right words. And, uh, but let me give you five quick areas that I think the child of God should exercise separation first in our actions, what we do. There are things we should not do. Um, I think we should be careful to obey the law as long as it's possible. I think we should be careful to, I, I believe in being separate um, from gambling, um, liquor, uh, dances, the theater. Um, everything in the movie movie theater is not sinful, but there's so much wrong in that place. I'm not going to endorse that place, especially in the day of, of all the technology we've got. You want to watch something, don't, don't go to a, a, a world that's going to advertise all these wrong things and let your family put in front of that. But <clears throat> there, are, there are actions, things. I should not do some things. I shouldn't be cussing out my neighbor. So I should be separate from certain actions and behavior. I, there are also attitudes. There are, um, the, Bible, the Bible says that I should control my tongue. The Bible says I should control my temper. 
The Bible says, uh, he, uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. And so I should be separate from the rest of the world in my attitude. You want to be hateful? Go ahead. I'm not going to hate you back. Uh, you want to be bitter? Go ahead. Be bitter. I will not retaliate with bitterness. I'm not going to go through my few 24-hour days that I have left and let them be sown with bitterness. I'm not going to do that. And uh, with God's help, and I'm not saying I couldn't be um, pushed to a point where I get bitter, and I, I hope I wouldn't, but attitudes. So we should be separate in our actions, the things we do. We should be separate in our attitude. Um, the, the, uh, the lustfulness, the covetousness, those are attitudes that we, we should separate ourselves from. And then uh, associations. Uh, I could not imagine being a member of of, uh, of organizations that are godless organizations. I couldn't be a member of a lodge of these secret societies and they, and, and they may not have any evil in them, but how could I, how could I be associated with a bunch of people? Some are saved, some aren't. Um, some are boozers, some are uh, godless, some are um, immoral. Um, I, I can't associate with um, things that are that are wrong things clubs biker clubs i i just love motorcycles my first um first year in bible college i i got to spend a summer working on our college our church staff and and i my car seriously broken down and i prayed i prayed for a motorcycle and, and um i had someone wonderful answered prayer 14 days later um I had a motor, brand new motorcycle uh, and, uh, for the summer. Somebody gave me, he was going to be out of town. He said, he won't use my bike during the summer. And I thought he meant bicycle. No, he had a beautiful, a beautiful motorcycle. I rode that motorcycle all summer. I like motorcycles. I couldn't be in a motorcycle group, a bunch of guys who go riding, or guys and girls, whoever, that go riding around saved and unsaved. I can't have that thing. I can't have an association. <clears throat> Our church has always been a Baptist church. We don't associate with other churches that are not Baptist. I'm not against them. I pray for churches. Boy, the gospel needs to be preached. And I pray God help these people preach the gospel, even if it's an accident, help them get the gospel preached. And so, um, but I'm not, we're not going to have our youth group get together with the Presbyterian kids or the Calvary Chapel kids or, or the Assembly of God. We're just not doing that. And that because we're, we believe in separation. So we've got our actions, we've got our attitude, we've got our associations, and then our affections, the things we want, the things that matter. I'll tell you, I am not, we, we've been here 41 years. If we'd have had a gym, I think that would have been awesome. But you know what? A gym or no gym, that's not a big deal. Buses, that matters. Um, whether we have some beautiful facilities, a fellowship hall, all that would be great. But you know what? I want to be, but I don't care. I want to be in the jails and the rest homes. And, and, I, and I would... I would rather our energies be put into main, the main, like our wonderful people, very few who take care of our buses and pray for bus mechanics, but, but the very few who take care of our buses, I would rather have them than have people who are taking care of a, a nice fellowship hall. We, you know, we have a wedding on Saturday and, and uh, so we had the, the reception outside and it's a hundred degrees and, oh, it'd be nice to have a fellowship hall. But, but our, what is it that we want? It's not about a building. It's not about air conditioning. It's about, it's about the things of God. In Colossians, he says, if you then be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. What do we want? I don't want to, I don't, I'm, I'm 67. And the, if I had the money to buy a motor home and cruise around the country, I, I love seeing stuff. My wife and I, a few years ago, we flew into Newark, and rented a car and drove through the through Boston and went up to Niagara Falls, went around and it was a it was a nice couple of weeks. But you know what? That's a that's a vacation. Now it's back to the things that really matter. That was just quiet time for us together. Now it, this is the urgent. This is the important. What are my affections? Uh, I'd like to see. We were Mrs. Goddard and I were talking about going on a road trip, going up through Utah through the beautiful um, national monuments and up to um, to. Uh, uh, Mount Rushmore and then Glacier Park and back through Yellowstone or whatever. And, um, and we got talking about it. And she said, you think we could just look at pictures on the computer? <laughs> you know. 
you know, the, you get to a point where the beds aren't comfortable and you drive too much and you ache and you don't feel good. And then you start walking and my knees don't let me walk very far. And I think, yeah, let's just sit in the recliner and, and, and look at somebody else's photos of Yellowstone. But um, what is it? What are our affections? I, have, I, I don't have any desire for a new car. I don't have any desires for a fancy house. And I've got a beautiful car. My wife does a beautiful house. The, that's the last thing. Those things are just things. And um, we, we, we should be separate from wrong affections. And then lastly, so our actions, our attitude, our associations, our affections, and our appearance. We should be separate in how we look. And, and it's summertime. And man... You, a, a, a guy has got to focus on his shoelaces out in public. Girls, uh, I was pulling out of my street the other day, coming to church, and I looked both ways. There's a gal walking her dog, and she had less on than a typical, than someone would wear under their clothes. And I was, I, I was embarrassed for her, and I, and I, I, I thought, man, I ought to yell, hey, you forgot your dress. But I didn't. I wouldn't, wouldn't be rude. But I just, I, boy, we're. Our, our appearance, we should be separate, modest. And then we, we've got a, there's always been, it's nothing new, this let down who cares how I look. Let's look, let's dress the easiest, most comfortable, most convenient way possible. And, um, and, and men look like women and women look like men. And you can't tell who's who. And that we should be separate in our appearance. We should be separate in our dress, in our hair, in our face. Uh, someone ought to be able to look at a, a, a person's face and know if it's a man or a woman. And this crowd of people who cross over in sports, how do you do that? Um, somebody made a movie, I can't remember who it was, but I, I didn't see it, but one of my kids told me about it, and, and it was a mock movie. A bunch of dropout athletes who couldn't quite make it, but they just all said they're girls. And there's five guys, and they, they, <laughs> they got in women's basketball. That's so shameful. And they were making a mockery of it, of course. But, but you know what? A girl should look like a girl. And I love I love watching my, my mom come into church on Sundays. And she'll she'll look beautiful. And I pick her up on Sunday morning for church. And, and then a lot of times Sunday night, she comes into church with my sister. And she's changed into another beautiful outfit. No one wonders that my mom is not only a lady, but a pretty lady. And there's no wonder about... Um, you know, she, she takes care of herself and my wife is the same way. And, um, and my, my granddaughter, uh, Grace, she's athletic. She's very athletic, but nobody wonders whether she's a girl or not. She's a girl. Now she can beat me in ping pong and her brother. Um, and, uh, and she's, uh, there's nothing lazier. Uh, she's not so soft. She couldn't wrestle somebody, I'm sure. But, uh, oh, we ought to, our appearance, we ought to be separate. This whole world they don't have any modesty. They don't have any discretion. They're, they're, the world is trying to erase all the things that God elevates. God elevates women as the most beautiful thing. You know, in Genesis, he said, he created this and it was good and that and it was good and created this and it was good. And he created the woman. He said, this is very good. The woman of the height of creation. Uh, that woman, uh, beautiful. And then, and then in, in the Bible says that the king's daughters are all glorious within. Not just a beautiful outside, but a beautiful inside. And uh, hey, the child of God ought to be separate. We ought to be different. If some unsaved person who doesn't know God, doesn't know the Bible, doesn't know church, if they are the same in their lifestyles, you and me, something is seriously wrong. And it's wrong with us. Hey, have a great day. Uh, let's pray for a good week. Souls to be saved. And let's be in our places for soul winning and Wednesday Bible study.